Hi there, Tim Warner here from CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets micro nugget entitled Internet Explorer 10 in Windows 8. The Internet Explorer web browser has been around for many, many years. We're up to version 10 in Windows 8 operating system. This browser does not support, I guess I'll go to my last bullet point first, does not support Windows XP or the ill-fated Windows Vista operating systems. Thus, Microsoft has drawn a hard line in the sand in terms of leaving XP in the dust and forcing customers to go past Vista into Windows 7 or, of course, preferably the current release, Windows 8. Anyway, that having been said, what are the notable features of this latest and greatest version of Internet Explorer? Well, one difference between IE 10 under Windows 7 versus Windows 8 is that in Windows 8 we have this start screen, this metro style interface with these live tiles, and we have a separate metro metro style version of Internet 10. Now what are the principles of a metro style application? Well basically it's a touch centric full screen interface. Touch centric means it's optimized for tablet devices or monitors that support touch input. As I said, it runs full screen only. That's just a metro design principle. We also have a traditional version of IE10 that looks and behaves like Internet Explorer 9 and earlier that will run just fine on Windows 7, thank you very much, and also in the desktop environment of Windows 8. Now, support for Adobe Flash and the metro version version of Internet Explorer 10 has been controversial. Initially, Microsoft said, no, we're not going to support Flash for the Metro-style version of IE. That raised a lot of eyebrows. There are many products nowadays that rely upon Flash, and the thought of them not running in Windows 8 was pretty devastating news. As of this recording, though, in summer 2012, we're at the consumer preview level. Microsoft seems to be backtracking and saying that they will support Flash in Metro IE. E10. What actually happens in the release to manufacturing version of Windows 8 will be anybody's guess. Keep your eyes out for that news. As far as day-to-day -day behavior, Internet Explorer 10's big push, its big claim to fame, at least as far as Microsoft marketing department is concerned, is the browser's support of W3C standards, in particular HTML5 and CSS3, the very latest vanguard of web presentation and structure. What the this means is, at least on paper, Internet Explorer 10 should be very compatible with competing browsers, which Microsoft probably doesn't care about any more than it has to, but it should offer nice compatibility with web application architectures going forward. From a performance standpoint, Microsoft tells us that IE 10 boasts hardware acceleration, which should improve things like graphic rendering and multimedia streaming. If there's one gotcha to the browser, I've already said it, the fact that it does doesn't degrade to versions of Windows prior to Windows 7. Let's pop into a brief demo and I'll show you how IE works in Metro in the start screen interface as well as in the traditional desktop one. So here we are in Windows 8 Consumer Preview Edition and we're going to look at Internet Explorer 10. You can see in the default start screen interface we have a live tile for Internet Explorer but first I want to show you the traditional Windows Explorer. So we'll click the desktop tile to switch over there and then we can launch Internet Explorer using the handy icon that some newcomers to Windows 8 might assume is the start button. <laughs> no, it's not. This is Internet Explorer 10. We can open the gear menu and come down to about to confirm that. And the basic user interface is very similar to IE9, actually. We can search directly from the address bar using our default search engine. It's going to search Bing, of course, by default. And from that gear or tools menu, you have access to all of your configuration options. Pretty straightforward stuff. A multi-tab, somewhat extensible version of IE. We can go back to the start screen interface by navigating to the lower left until the start screen icon appears. We can then click that to jump on over. And now let's pop into the Metro version of Internet Explorer 10. Now you'll see we're here at YouTube.com. This is just to confirm that Flash does in fact run under IE 10. Now in this virtual machine it runs pretty darn slowly actually, so I'm going to actually double left click on the address bar. Doing so you'll notice brings up a panel that allows us to navigate to free 
frequently accessed sites in a way that's similar to what you have in Google Chrome. This text box is really large to accommodate touch interfaces, of course. And you'll notice that Bing gives us a history. It says no previously visited pages match your search. So it's history matching based on URLs that we've gone to in the past. Other points to notice are the full screen interface, as we said before, the immersive environment. This gear icon down in the bottom right gives us access to page tools, where you'll notice we can do a page specific find, view this page using the desktop version of the browser, or if there's a metro style app linked on the page, or if there's an app associated with a website, you'll see there's a get app for the site option. Right clicking on the page brings up the bottom address bar which we've already had open, as well as the tab interface that you see up on top. This is the Metro Internet Explorer version of browser tabs. If you click the plus button, we can navigate to a frequently accessed page, or we can browse to a new site. The bottom button allows us to open a new private browsing tab, or we can close all tabs. Now I showed you how to get to internet options in the non-Metro version of IE. It's not particularly intuitive to get to internet options for the Metro app. What we want to do is navigate to the upper right corner and then mouse down to expose the charms bar. And then in that charms bar, select settings. And in settings, because Internet Explorer is our current foreground application, we can select internet options. This enables us to tweak up settings in the Metro version of the application. Finally, just for those of you who are getting accustomed to Metro style applications, we can navigate back to the start screen by going to the lower left. We see the start screen appear as an icon. Alternatively, we can go to the upper left corner and mouse down to bring out a tray that shows our currently running applications. You'll see on my system, I have the traditional desktop, which we were just in, the music app, and the SkyDrive app all running. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.